Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So I found a new product to help me make a shaker card. So let's go ahead and give this a try. All right, so I was at Spotlight today and I found something that I have seen before but I kind of just walked past it. These are shaker domes and I'm interested to give these a go because I have a lot of trouble with shakers. They never seem to shake enough for me so I want to try these and see if perhaps this will help me I've never used these before I've never made a card with them before I'm gonna try and make this as simple as I possibly can but just a heads up I haven't done this before so if I screw it up you guys aren't allowed to laugh at me so I'm gonna try and do something a little bit different than what I normally do so I'm not using I'm not gonna do an ink blend or anything for this card I'm just gonna do something simple so I've jumped into this is this sparkle a paper pad from last year's Kayser Craft Christmas release. And I'm going to grab this kind of globy, snowy kind of looking one. And I'm going to use this for my background. So I'm just going to start off by grabbing my trimmer. Grabbing my trimmer in. I've got my card base all ready to go. I think the easiest way for me to do this is to put the the dome in between the front no that doesn't work I'm just I'm just trying to work it out so according to this the easiest way to do it is to kind of squish it just ignore it um, squish it between two bits of paper so you'd stick it down like that and then you put the snow globe over the top but I kind of want the snow globe oh, I want that in the background of the globe as well so I'm kind of trying to work out how to do that okay so if I do so I'm just trying to work this out there was a couple of seconds there where I sort of just pulled this all apart and was thinking about it so I think the easiest way for me to do this now is to put the snow globe down just down like that put the paper over the top cut the circle out stick it over the top and then the circle that I cut out I'll put down sort of behind this so I won't cut it won't stick it until I'm ready to stick it I don't know we'll, we'll just fluff along with it and see what happens so I'm going to cut this to the size of the card base so that's the 10 point this is actually something I've been meaning to do for a really long time I'm just gonna mark on my trimmer where the the 10 point whatever it is is so that I can do this without having to measure quite so much so we'll cut this to the right side of the card size of the card base and then we just need to work out where we're going to put the actual snow globe itself so I want to have it sort of about there so then I'm going to grab one of my infinity circle dies so I should have one that fits so I'm just going to pick these up and see which one fits on here that fits on there Just the right size. No, I just, oh no, just. I reckon the next one down is going to be too small. No, no, it fits too. We'll go the slightly too small one because it's easier to change our minds and go the other way. So I'm just going to again put that in the spot that I want it. And then the ring, or the the inside bit, I'm going to use that on the inside. Whoops. So I'll, I'll stick it back on the background when we get to it. And have that sitting behind it so it still looks like it's one piece of paper. Okay. So while, not while that's drying, because it's not drying. Um, I do want to put a little image behind it though, so I'm grabbing my snow globe scenes. This is the Lawn Fawn one. I'm going to use a bit of snow globe stuff from them. So I'm grabbing, grabbing this little um, scene here with the little gingerbread man and the little house. Because I figure that goes with the pink. I'm just going to 
just trying to decide if I'm going to stamp this before or after. I'm going to cut, I'll cut the circle out first and then I'll do the stamping on it because I might have to just extend the line a little bit on here. Um, if I put it on the top, it'll be the bit that I cut off anyway because I'm going to cut around this afterwards. So I'll ink this up and we'll put it, stamp it on. I'm just trying to line it up with the edge. No, I really hate that stamp. It's just, it, it didn't work well. I didn't hate the stamp, I hated the impression. Sorry, I should have been more careful with my words there. So I'm just going to have another shot. Obviously, browns to do the gingerbread and the gingerbread men, but some pinks in the decoration to kind of go with the the colour of the paper that we're using in the background. I'm going to use gold. We're not going to have actual snow in here. We're going to have just some shaky bits. I'm going to use the rose gold. I'll play with some rose gold um, embossing powder as well because it looks really pretty with the pink. So, whenever I'm a bit funny with colours, I jump in here and have a look I sort of try and decide which colours suit. So I reckon I'm going to play with R, 22, 21 and 20. And for my browns, I'm going to play, I'm going to play in the 20s, so I'm going to do E23, E25 and maybe just a little bit a little bit of E21 I think that'll be my my gingerbread colors so I'm gonna go ahead and do the house so I'll, I'll I don't color with you guys a lot so we'll we'll do this because it's just such a small image so I'm just gonna put a little bit of the really dark brown up underneath where the the snow is that's sort of my shadow bit, just a little bit there on the chimney. And then come in with the 23 and just blend that out and down to about three quarters of the way. Actually, I'm gonna have the brown go all the way around the outside and then just have this sort of middle bit be the really pale. So I'm just trying to blend that out nicely. I know it's really hard to see because it's such a small little image, but I'm hoping you guys get the idea. And then with that R21, not R21, E21, which is really light, I'm just going to come in and try and get that highlight there. Just move the ink around, push it up, try and get it to blend. If I can't get it to blend really nicely, which sometimes I have trouble with these colours, I just grab the 25, not 25, 23, just do tip to tip, pick up a little bit of the dark ink on the light marker, and it'll just help you get that blend. And I'm going to do the gingerbread man the exact same way. I'm just going to do the shadow, the dark shadow underneath his little scarf here, and a little bit on top of his scarf, and then just down his side. I'm going to try and keep this reasonably light. I really like the 23, that's my favourite. It's not my favourite brown, but I do love the E20s. I feel like they give me a really nice colour. I'm going to do the same thing with the the lightness. I'm going to bring the E23 all the way up and around and then kind of use the 21 right in the center. Pinwheels in just a sec. So I'm doing these 
pretty similarly. I'm finding the dark shade, the dark place first, and then leaving the middle bit as kind of the light spot. So like the door is lightest in the middle. For the little gumdrops, I'm just gonna use the dark pink, just cause I, I feel like they're gonna get lost if I use too much just of the little shade, like the pale shade. So I'm just gonna use them with dark. And then for the, the candy canes, I'm gonna do them, because it's just, there's so little of them. I'm just gonna do them sort of in various, not various shades, but like one of the sections is gonna be the dark pink, and then one section will be the light pink, and one will be the medium pink. So they'll all be pink, but just slightly different. And then just for the candy, like for, for the sticks, I'm just gonna color them in just using that darkest, um, E25. That way they still fit in, but they're, they're not anything crazy. So from there, what I want to do is cut this out. Now this would be obviously a lot easier to do if I had the matching dies. I don't, so I'm just kind of going to fussy cut this. So I'm going to come up and around the house and then around the gingerbread guy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I can't get into the really small bits. It's just trying to get that general shape. down to its little arm here so just being gentle On the bottom, it's just really, really not smooth, so I just need to fix that. I hate little knobbly bits. Right. So I'll stick on the bottom, and then we'll put that over the top, and then stick that in between all of this, and hopefully that works. So I'm going to put a bit of glue on the back of this. I'm going to use liquid glue this time because A, I don't want anything coming, I don't want it to be sticky around the outside so I'm going to use a little bit less glue than I would normally use uh, but I also want to be able to just kind of move this around a little bit so I want to make sure I get this in the right spot. and just deciding if I want to add anything else to it. I think I want to add just a little, a little bit of shadow. And what I'm going to do is, normally I would use greys for shadows. What I'm going to do is use my R00, which is a pink, it's like a pinkish white. So I'll show you sort of on here. It's just going to give me just a very small pink outline. And I'm just going to put a bit of shadow underneath my sort of areas here. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect because shadows aren't perfect. So it'll be fine. Just, just to add a little bit of something. It's so, it looks darker now, but it'll, it'll dry. It'll dry. All right. So now we're going to stick. I think, <laughs> stick the little scene in the middle again, and then we can put the snow globe over the top with our bits and pieces, and then put this in over the top and actually make the snow globe. So, I'm just gonna. Temporarily adhere this down. We can put our little bits of sparkle in 
here. So like I said, I'm doing rose gold snow, which rose gold snow is not a real thing, but eh. I just want to try something different. I'm just going to open this up so it sits flat. I always get glitter everywhere whenever I use it. The only thing I'm worried about is if there's any sticky anywhere. It doesn't feel like it to me. I can't feel any sticks, so I'm hoping it's going to be okay. I'm going to put some of these on the... And then this comes with a little sticky edge, so that sort of helps you... I'm just getting a tissue and just sort of wiping the inside. I probably should have done this before I took the, plus the release paper off. But just because everything I bring into this house gets a dog hair on it, I'm assuming I'll get a dog hair on the inside of my little shaker dome. It's better than my normal shakers, but it's still got, still got too much static. I'm hoping that'll kind of come off as it sits in there, but and I don't want to pull it up, so I'm just, I'm just going to deal with it. It is better than it, it has been in the past though. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my actual background down. We're learning people. So then I'm going to grab the actual, well it's not the actual, I'm grabbing the Snow Grow, the Lawn Fawn Snow, Shut Us Card Snow Globe add-on. Gee, that was really hard to get out. And I'm going to use a couple of these bits to kind of help me finish this off. Now that's going to be too small, so I can't use that. But I can use this as the snow globe base, because that fits. So I'm going to cut this out of some paper. I'm just trying to remember what was in here, if there was like a wood grain or something that I could use, or I might use that black. So I'm just going to cut out just a little bit, because I want to leave some of it in the, in the book. out. I'm also going to cut this little bit out of there's some rose gold foiled paper in here so I'm going to cut the little edging out of that and then I'm just I, I need the globe to have an outline I think I think it looks a bit silly sitting there just like that so I think what I'll do is try and get a frame by using two of the infinities put together. So if I do those two together, it'll cut an actual frame. So we'll give all three of those a bit of a shot and see what we end up with. sometimes if you sometimes get a bit of a, a ridge if you've used a die and it, it happens with the little bit like character dies as well I just grab a scoring tool and just really gently push that out that way it sits a bit flatter and it doesn't look quite so obvious it's only an issue with that ring so I'm going to use the liquid glue again to stick that down
and then for the sentiment, I'm grabbing in my last lot of Lawthorn. I know. Uh, this is my offset sayings. Christmas. I think I just want to do May Your Christmas Be Merry and Bright. Or maybe. I wish I had something that said May Your Christmas Be Sweet, which I don't because I don't have any of the. Oh, actually. I was sort of hoping that I had something in the in that sort of sweet sentiment with the, the, the creature was stirring, but I don't. So I'm grabbing the Merry and Bright, just grabbing a different stand block because I'll need something different. So I've got the Merry and Bright. So I'll put this in the rose gold in my embossing powder and then I'll do the May Your Christmas Be in black so that there's a bit of black on here. Some moxie embossing powder which I got from spotlight I haven't seen it again I sort of found it once and then haven't found it so I'm not quite sure if they are stocking it or not but any rose gold will do here because we're just trying to match everything that we've already got that there's just a little bit of powder that's not in the right spot just grab yourself a paintbrush preferably a clean one and just, you can just sort of dust away anything that's in the wrong spot obviously the finer the finer the paintbrush the easier that is you can get into all the spots so I'm just going to go ahead and heat this up the memento again just coming back in and we'll do the may your Christmas be that a bit of a clean so we put it away just lining that up again you could use the misty for this in fact it would probably be easier I try not I don't want to use my misty too much because I know that a lot of people don't have them so I'm trying to show you that you don't need them they just make life a little bit easier but let me know if you'd like to see me use the Misty a bit more because I'm, I'm always a bit iffy with it because I can line things up pretty well with my mats and stuff. I'm just going to check this before I stamp it, stamp it. Just grabbing a bit of scrap paper. Just stamping it out to make sure it's, it is straight enough. Like it's complicated because it's got the shaker but the card itself is very very simple and it kind of just it gives you something different I don't know about the shaker I need to experiment a bit more with the shaker dome I think there were two different sizes with the shaker dome you didn't this is the small one there was a big one as well which I might have to get next time and have a bit of a play with but I, I think I should have done the the heat embossing before I stuck it down because then it wouldn't be quite so wobbly because it's obviously warped a little bit with the with the heat but I, I like it I think it's I think it's really pretty I kind of like that I used a completely different color set than I normally do use because I don't usually go for pink um, but I wanted to use a color that I don't use and pink still Christmassy without being too not Christmassy if that makes sense I don't know anyway I hope you guys did enjoy this one please give it a big thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe to my channel I'm going to try not to do too many more Christmas cards from here on in just because I know at this point if you haven't got them in the mail, you're probably not going to get to where you need to go, but there will be another card video on Christmas Day where you'll get to see all the Christmas cards that I've made before this. So if you are interested, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic weekend, whatever you get up to, and I will catch you again in my next video. Sending lots of huggles. Bye!